Hey guys, it's Michelle with Florida Keys Birding and today we're talking about a early warbler. This is the yellow rumped warbler that we're going to be talking about. Um, this is a bird that is a species spotlight for me for January and February. I always see these guys numbers start to increase in January and February and I will show you why. Um, it's actually I actually was able to find it on eBird what the historical numbers show and I was like okay it's not just me I was right so let's take a look real quick and let's talk about their migration this is an early migrant compared to some of the other warblers most of the other warblers don't leave town until probably late April early May and this one gets a move on pretty early and it leaves pretty late in fall so um, let's take a look real quick at eBird Okay, so let's take a look at migration patterns for the yellow rumped warbler. This is on eBird. You can find this in the science tab. So you can take a look at this for any bird on eBird. It's a really, really cool tool. I love this tool because it tells you exactly when this bird is expected. Okay, so, all right, so right now I have it for like June 7th. So they're up in their breeding territory. You can see all the way from up to Alaska and you know up in Canada way 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 up here and then as we go through in June July they're doing their thing up north even into August and you see a little bit of movement from September still nowhere near Florida there's a bunch of warblers that I normally see even from August into September and then especially into October so um, you can kind of see they're on the move mid-September they're really starting to move um, late September they're still pretty far north you know October 5th okay usually by October 5th all the birds are here normally for Florida for South Florida usually oh look October 12th this is usually our big week this is our biggest week um, of the year for fall migration so look look how far up they still are they're still pretty far they're like still in so they, they kind of looks like they kind of make their way down slowly all right so let's zoom in a little bit so these ones have already made it into Mexico but for some reason these eastern ones they they take their time <laughs> so we're into mid-october just a little few okay later October there's a few in North Florida they're really taking their time November still not much in the Keys or South Florida they're now they're in like Central Florida and November November they've made their way into West still not a huge population in um, in the Keys let me zoom in a bit so you can really see where we're at yeah so they're they're more here you can see them in the central part of the state and more the west um, and they're getting down here into South Florida in November December as we're going later into December okay now they're showing up farther south okay yep by January they're really here so they're really finally have made their way all the way here in January and into the Caribbean as well it looks like okay so let's see where else do they go yeah so now they're kind of in here and they're in Florida and they're in these areas south okay so yeah this is about right for what I have seen um, they always increase in January and February in my area so um, they're always kind of a species spotlight so it takes them quite a while to get here and to really saturate the area so right now I've got a ton of these birds let me let's let's watch let's watch their migration back first <laughs> let's do that before we talk about it yeah I have a ton of them right now they're they're all over the place okay so let's watch how long it takes for them to head back up north look how far down they are they're all the way down to Panama that is a long migrant okay so <clears throat> okay so March 1st they're still um, they're starting to be on the move again they're starting to move out so they're starting to head north slowly um, in March and then into they're pretty much mostly gone in Florida um, into April so they're most they're pretty much on their way back yeah so probably by March usually I've noticed by March 
mid-March they're there there's a couple and then they're gone after that you know so so yeah this makes sense so this is kind of what I've observed and this is pretty um, yeah this is pretty normal this is kind of where where it is for us and then see look they're heading back May they're already pretty far north and they're heading back up up and up and away okay there they are <laughs> okay cool so this is kind of their migration pattern and the dates and uh, when you can expect them so as you can see this is a short to long distance migrant um, all the way from Alaska and New England to Central America so they they go all over the place. Um, so yellow rumped warblers generally, as you, as you saw, will winter mu across much of central and the southeastern U.S. Um, and sometimes they do come to backyard feeders um, if food is offered. So they'll eat things like sunflower seeds, raisins, suet, and peanut butter. So let's talk a little bit about what they eat and food. Um, they're, they're very diverse for forager compared to other warblers. Um, other warblers are, you know, kind of picky. Some just, you know, do fruit and bugs and then some of them just do mostly bugs. Um, but, you know, they don't seem to be super picky. Um, so, which which makes sense given their wide range of territory. So, other places that warblers will forage include picking at insects on washed up seaweed at the beach. That's kind of cool. Um, skimming, I want to say I've probably seen them doing that. Um, skimming insects from the surface of rivers and from the ocean definitely makes sense. <laughs> picking them uh, and picking them out of spider webs um, and grabbing them off piles of manure. I definitely haven't seen them do that but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, so they also will eat in the summer mainly insects uh, including things like caterpillars and other types of larvae like leaf beetles, bark beetles, weevils, ants, scale insects, aphids, grasshoppers, caddis flies, crane flies, gnats, and spiders. They could go ahead and eat the scale off my mango trees. I would love for them to do that. <laughs> So maybe the one because there's a ton of them in my yard right now. Well, they're in the they're in the gumbo limbo trees, kind of hanging out, um, you know, going back and forth to fig trees and all that. Um, but yeah, if they could just eat the scale insects off my plants, that would be great. Okay, so they also eat spruce budworm. Um, a serious forest pest during outbreaks. I don't know about all that because I, I don't I don't live up north with those kind of uh, spruces and stuff like that. But if you if you live up there, let me know. Um, during migration and in winter, they will eat great numbers of fruits. I have seen them eating fig tree fruits. I always talk about the fig. It is a popular popular tree for birds. It was the first bird tree that I planted in my bird garden when I moved into this house because there wasn't any um, trees, there wasn't any plants in this yard, in my yard, in my, in my new house. So that was my first tree. I was like, oh, I've got to put a fig. Um, so yeah, during, um, like I said, during migration and in winter, they'll eat lots of fruits, um, bayberry and wax myrtle. They'll also eat that. Um, that's really good for their digestive system. <clears throat> it's kind of suited for that. Um, so they like to eat that. And um, the habitat is one reason why yellow rumped warblers winter so, um, so much farther north than other species. So yeah, I mean, if their diet is that diverse, it really makes sense that they could just really be any and everywhere. And they can just take their time getting anywhere they want because they just they eat everything so um, other commonly eaten fruits for the yellow rump warbler are juniper berries poison ivy poison oak greenbrier grapes Virginia creeper and dogwood um, so they will like I said eat wild seeds um, such as from beach grasses and goldenrod and they will come to feeders with sunflower seeds, raisins, peanut butter and suet like I said. Um, there's one that has been coming to my yard a little bit. He seems a little spooked by me but there has been a few flying into my yard you know doing various things. I have all that stuff um, in my feeders except the peanut butter because like I said I'm allergic to peanut butter so we don't do that. Um, so on their wintering grounds in Mexico they've even been seen sipping sweet 
honey dew liquid excreted by aphids wow that is interesting <laughs> okay so a cool fact is that male yellow rump warblers tend to forage higher in trees than females do. So if you see some way, way, way at the treetops, that might be a male versus a female. So another interesting fact is that when yellow rump warblers are foraging with other warbler species, um, they will assert themselves over pine and black Bernian warblers, but they will let the palm warblers, magnolia warblers, and black-throated green warblers kind of do whatever they want. So it's funny, they won't step to them, but the others, they will. <laughs> so I wonder why that is. I'm not really sure why, um, but it would be interesting to know. I wonder if it has to do with the temperament of those warblers compared to the others. I wonder if maybe the um, pine and the black burnians are more chill and laid back and maybe the palm magnolia and black throated greens are more aggressive who knows um but i mean yeah so that that's kind of interesting that's kind of cool so um as far as behavior and stuff like that um yellow rump warblers will flit through the canopies of coniferous forest as they forage and they'll cling to the bark surfaces to look for hidden insects um, even more than most other warblers do but they also frequently sit on exposed branches and catch passing insects like the flycatcher does. I actually have watched them do this. I saw that earlier today. <laughs> I was recording one and I saw them do that. I saw them do exactly that. That they, you know, this, this warbler came off the branch and then he flitted around in a circle and then came back on the branch just like a flycatcher. So I have seen them do exactly that. So where can you find yellow rump warblers? Just about anywhere. <laughs> you can find them in parks, pine oak forests, dunes, residential areas, your backyard, your local feeder, all that good stuff. We know the range. Um, and then according to allaboutbirds.com, their tropical wintering grounds, um, they live in mangroves, thorn scrub, pine oak fir forests, and shade coffee plantations. Um, down here, I see them in the figs, and I see them in the gumbo limbos, I see them in the mahogany trees, I see them in all those main native trees. So, uh, but they usually are up, up high, you know, so, uh, so I do, I just see them all over. And so the last thing I want to talk about is how do um, humans have an effect on the yellow rump warbler specifically. So um, pesticides can always be a risk, um, even though this bird is a low conservation, you know, um, concern, you know, if, if things get out of hand, any, anything can, can get into that other category so we want to prevent this at all costs so yeah pesticides they can always be a risk you want to keep pesticides out of your garden you know try to do things naturally um, honestly I don't use any pesticides in my garden at all um, and I don't have any problems I mean a lot of beneficial bugs will come in and take care of any insect problems that you might have and if you're really having a problem you know neem oil at its minimum you know I guess on your fruit trees and certain things like that but generally just you know don't do it um, collisions of course window collisions building collisions not having your lights off during migration these are things that um, you know can all always affect all birds all migrating birds at night um, alteration in habitat um, of course losing habitat would would affect birds but in this case there's been a lot of planting of conifer um, plantations and trees uh, maybe maybe Christmas trees <laughs> I'm thinking maybe that has something to do with it maybe there's conifer plantations for Christmas trees or something but it says that this has actually benefited the species by allowing for more range so the more trees you plant um, the better you're supporting wildlife um, and then as far as um, direct human handling goes it appears to be very traumatic to this bird um, it says it's very traumatizing um, to handle this bird um, 
um, and it may not feed or metabolize normally for one to two days after being captured. So I know that there are some bird programs that help injured birds and some who just band them and they count them, um, but apparently for this bird it can be kind of traumatizing. And if you find this bird somewhere, obviously, you know, don't grab it, don't handle it, you know, try to give it its space because it doesn't seem to like human contact. Um, so yeah, so that's about it about the yellow rump warbler. I hope you learned some cool stuff about it and um, you know if you're in Florida right now you should be seeing this bird pretty much everywhere um, so enjoy them for the rest of the month of February and March because they will be heading back north slowly but surely any day now <laughs> okay so everybody um, you know enjoy these birds until they go and all of our uh, wintering birds and all of our birds until spring migration but spring migration is coming soon and I'm excited about it so we'll see what we see this year all right thanks guys bye